Hi, and welcome back to the Consult a Counselor series, where I answer parenting-related questions so that you can be present and at ease with your child and live life mindfully. Today's question is, how can I best help my kid interact with extended family that they don't see often during the holidays? Well, holiday gatherings can bring a lot of excitement and some anxious feelings, especially for kids. And if we're being honest, even for some teens and adults who aren't used to being around these members of extended family all the time. And we tend to forget how socializing is actually a learned skill. And yes, most of us just pick it up throughout our life experiences. However, when it comes to kids interacting with people that they don't see on a regular basis, it can be a little bit challenging. So here are five tips to help you help your child feel more comfortable and confident. The first is start with preparation. Before any gathering, talk to your kids about who they'll be seeing and what to expect. Share some fun facts or stories about these family members to create some familiarity by the time that they get to meet them, because knowing who they're about to meet makes the environment just a little less intimidating. The second is, especially for younger children, practice how to say hello in a way that feels comfortable for them. And if they're not into hugs and kisses, teach alternatives like high fives or polite waves. If your kid isn't into hugs, be sure to listen in to episode 225, where we discuss this very topic. Third, empower them to have options. Sometimes we all just need a break and sometimes even an out, so to speak, is helpful. So let them know that it's fine to take breaks if they're feeling overwhelmed. Maybe even create a quiet signal that they can use if they need some quiet time, like a quick chat with you in another room or stepping outside for some fresh air. You may even want to bring in something that they can do as a backup, but do emphasize that it's a backup. For example, if I allow my son to play on his Switch as soon as we get somewhere, why would he ever choose to do anything else but that thing that makes him feel most comfortable and brings him joy? So leave the power tools or the magic tricks as a backup. The fourth is emphasize gratitude. Have frequent discussions with your kids on the importance of being grateful. And you can even compare how others don't have all that they have, which can help create awareness and empathy. Encourage your kids to say goodbye and to say thank you for those family members for hosting because this really reinforces kindness and respect and it leaves a positive impression, helping your kids to feel good about their efforts and just for being them. For more ideas on how to foster gratitude, do listen in to episode 227, and I'll be sure to link these reference episodes in the show notes for easy access. And lastly, things I highly recommend you do all year round is model and teach these social cues to your child and then practice them through role playing. Regardless if your kid is five or 15, always discuss social situations like when is a good time to join a conversation versus listening quietly. And of course, be sure that you model polite behaviors like making good eye contact and saying please and thank you. Remember that social interactions can feel tricky for kids, especially if they don't see these extended family members often. By preparing them, giving them tools on how to navigate interactions, and supporting them when they need to take a break, you're helping them build confidence and strengthen those family bonds. And as always, a little patience and encouragement always goes a long way. So my friends, I hope this helped. If you think that it can help another mom or dad friend, be sure to share it with them and hit the subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss the next video. If you have any questions for the Consulsa Counselor series, you can always DM me on any platform at Counselor V de Jesus, or you can ask your question anonymously by going to the link in the show notes. And as always, remember, in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Thanks so much and catch you next time. Have you ever thought, am I doing this right? Is this how it really gets done? I personally use something that tells me if I am actually in a meditative state and that thing is called Muse. The headband is equipped with monitors that read your heart rate, your brain waves, tells you exactly when you're in an active, neutral, or calm state. 
It's super easy to use. You turn it on, you place it on your head and you link it to the app. And the app has a ton of guided meditations that you can choose from. Not only do I use it on my own, but I also use it with clients as young as five years old. By using the Muse, you get all of the benefits that meditation gives you, like feeling calmer and more relaxed, having more focus and clarity, being better able to handle stress and being more in tune with your emotions. But you're also going to have that biofeedback in your hands that tells you if you're actually doing it right. And what I love the most is that it really helps you with your sleep. You can get the Muse for your own home at a discounted rate by turning to the link in the show notes below. I hope it's as great for you as it is for me.